Today we're going to show you how to do an oil and oil filter change on your vehicle. First I would recommend making sure that you've got the correct oil for your vehicle. When checking the oil specification with the manufacturer, also double check what quantity your engine will need. The manufacturer will offer two different quantities of oil, one with an oil filter change and one without. Second, the correct oil filter. And third, you should familiarise yourself with the engine bay and where everything is that you will need to interact with. On this engine, we can see the oil filler cap just here on the top of the block. And I've also got a dipstick on this particular model. Now I'm going underneath the car to remove the under tray. I'm going to familiarise myself with where the sump plug is and where the oil filter is. As you don't want to drain the gearbox oil by mistake. But if you're unsure, check a reputable forum or query it with the manufacturer. After removing the under tray, I'm now coming back up to the top of the engine to remove the oil filler cap. The reason I'm doing this is to make sure that there's not an airlock in the engine. So when I'm undoing the sump plug, it comes out as a nice stream rather than glugging out and potentially causing a mess all over your driveway. To make sure that the oil filter seal doesn't get squashed or crushed when fitting the new oil filter, put some oil just around the rubber seal to make sure that it goes on smoothly. Always tighten the oil filter by hand. There's no need to over tighten this. Always make sure you replace the crush washer on the sump plug. If you're unlucky enough to not get a crush washer, I'd recommend flipping over the original crush washer and putting it back in place. In this instance though, we've got a new one, so we'll be using that. The sump plug just needs to be nipped. It doesn't need to be overly tightened, so you don't want to be stripping the threads on the sump. When I checked online, the recommended amount was 3.3 litres. I've topped it up to about 2.8, 2.9 litres and I'm now checking the dipstick and it's in between the minimum and maximum mark. I am taking into consideration though that the oil filter will be empty and so I'm going to top it up to the maximum mark just to make sure that when we turn the engine over it's got plenty to go around the full system. So normally a manufacturer won't allow an engine to start until oil pressure has been recognised. If you're working on an older vehicle it may be worth turning the vehicle over and turning it off before it starts and repeating that process until oil pressure is built up within the oil system. That is an oil and oil filter change completed. Now we just need to refit the under tray, perhaps check the oil level again once the vehicle's dropped down and on a level surface. If you found this video useful, like the video, subscribe and check out more how-tos on the Silverline channel.